Oh, happy birthday, George. 216-578-1007 if you want to join us live. 800-348-1007. Guardians play tonight, 7-10. They begin the weekend series here at home against the LA Angels, who are a little bit above 500 right now. So we'll see what happens. Um, I think the weather is supposed to be uh, lovely all weekend long. Maybe a little bit of rain overnight tonight, but I think that it's... um, Going to be like upper 60s or 70s or something. So 7-10 tonight is when your uh, game will begin. That's your first pitch. About a half an hour prior after we roll out for the weekend is when your pregame will begin uh, here on WMMS. If you're watching live at alancoxshow.com, thank you to Cork Rockingham for helping. I <laughs> I thought that R was a C for a second. Uh, <laughs> cork, cork Rockingham. There's definitely a Rourke. Other, but like, you know. Mm, yeah, I know. Not but, working um, today. Uh, but thank you uh, so much for assisting us today. Hey, those guys, remember the guys who put the weights in the fish? Yeah. And how funny that video was when they were surrounded and being called out by their fellow competitors over this. These are guys who had won uh, other fishing tournaments before. And these two guys, they were called out because uh, this guy's got, that guy, that got weights in the fish. One guy screams out, call the cops. That was my favorite part. Call the cops. Because, uh, you know, there were tens of thousands of dollars on the line. Oh, yeah. Cash and prizes. Plus, competitive fishermen love the cops. You'll notice a lot of them have those back the bluegill flags, Mm. Bill. Yes, they love backing the bluegill. (laughs) But yeah, these those are blue uh, that matter. Yeah, yeah blue guys matter. Uh, anyway, but see the headlines a little clickbaity because they're like fishermen, uh, cheating fishermen get jail time, and I was like that can't be right. Well, they get ten days. They get ten days. I don't know if it's in county or where they go, but these are the two guys who boy they couldn't be more penitent over this. Uh, they were you know they get to give their statements in court. And uh, one of them talking about how just awful he felt because he had disappointed his mom. I mean, just days before Mother's Day. How do you think this guy's mom is going to be able to enjoy her day when her son is going to get a week and a half in the pokey? Jacob Runyon and Chase Kaminsky had to forfeit their boat, which is worth about 130 grand. And their fishing licenses were suspended for three years. They can make you Damn. give up your boat. It was a boat that they won. They won oh. the boat. Yeah, they won the boat. Yeah. So they, they won it I was gonna say, fraudulently. How, how dare you make me give up my boat? I'm not giving up my boat for you people. What I love, what's interesting is that they it says they lost their fishing licenses for three years, which is the maximum allowed by law. That means that no matter what you do, they can only suspend your fishing license for three years. You could be out there in the middle of Lake Erie effing the fish, and they'll only they give go, you three years. They go, three years. Three years. You can't do this again for three years. And then if we catch deep. you back out here, it's another three years. Yeah. Because it's not that deep. The fish or the lake? <laughs> the whole situation is not that deep. It, slang, Alan, black slang is not that serious. These two should be banned from every fishing tournament for life. Somebody says they are thieves and now they're convicted felons. You see how differently we treat people in this country, whether they are rich or not. You'd think these guys had murdered the other fishermen, by the way. They stuffed their fish with lead weights and fish fillets to try to win the Lake Erie Walleye Trail Tournament or loot. Uh, Coincidence? I don't know. This was uh, last September. The winner we get a prize of about 29 grand. And everybody saw the video, especially around these parts. This was national news because there are competitive fishermen everywhere, right? I can count on one hand the times that I went fishing with my dad. Uh, wasn't a lot of fishing going on there on, on Lake Michigan where we were. But when we would visit my mom's family, my mom's family were all rural. All my relatives on my mom's side are rural people. So like downstate Illinois, we'd go visit them a couple of times a year. And every once in a while, my dad and I would go out and my brother, we'd go fishing. 
But fishing's for like napping and drinking, not cash prizes. Let's bring it back to the basics. Let's bring it back to what fishing is supposed to be. And so uh, we weren't a fishing family, uh, but it was fun. You know, some of us who were raised on Babe Winkleman's TV show. Is that Bass Masters? Bass Masters. I know Bass Masters. Not to be confused with Les Claypool's show. Ass Masters. Bass Masters. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was diversifying, but yeah, Bass Masters. The, uh, the tra- we saw that video. That mm-hmm. the, the director of the tournament said that these guys were, the fish looked heavy, and so they cut them open. Ah, oh, they got weights. Call the cops. And they both pled guilty in March. And uh, they're going to get 10 days in jail as a result. But uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, feel terrible about it. <laughs> and there were, listen, if you saw the video, you know, we played you an edited version when it first uh, broke, but you saw the unedited version. Oh, who knew competitive fishermen were so salty with their language? Well, I mean, oh, isn't that a thing? Like so shoreman. salty. Yeah. They're talking like a like a dock worker. But these guys weren't working the dock. Anyway, a lot of expletives. They were just letting... Oh, me. they're furious. Oh, they, my they God. People they, cheating. They, they take called it real these, serious. They called these guys pee-pee and poo-poo heads. It was a whole thing. <laughs> they were just hurling... Really unloading on them. Unloading everything they could possibly come up with. They called them a, a babbling gunderfly or I don't know... Old-timey insults were flying, and these guys deserved it. They called them scallywags, probably. They, they, they probably called them, uh, uh, told them to bug her off, you fop doodle. Are they going to get marked so that when they do get their fishing licenses back, uh, like pirates get marked with a P? Yeah, mark these guys with a, a brand so they know a W they're the for cheaters. walleye. Yeah. I, I bet you these guys never go back to fishing. Cheater. These yeah. guys are going to have to go. They're going to have to relocate. They're going to have to be trying to fish in some other state's waterways because nobody around here is going to want to have anything to do with them. You know, as much as we say we believe in redemption, we really don't. We're happiest when people are down and stay down. I don't know why that is, but uh, that's what it is. So these guys were, uh, uh, you know, they took a plea deal. Uh, they had to give up their boat. And uh, they're going to get the 10 days in um, in jail. They wanted to give them six months. And again, when you get on the inside, you have to explain what you're in there for. What are you in here for? I put weights in fish. And then they shiv you mm-hmm. because that's a stupid reason to be in jail. I don't know where they'll do their time, but uh, let that be a lesson to you, other competitive fishermen who might be getting ideas. Maybe you think you need a little bit of an edge. That uh, fish crime doesn't pay hmm. is what they're trying to tell you with these guys. I got Kids Corner here. It ain't easy being a kid. Now look at what you gone done did. This is not brand new, but I do love it because uh, we've had conversations like this before about how difficult. Actually, the last couple of days, as a matter of fact, we had somebody leave a message asking me what Rube meant because they are a black listener and didn't understand white slang and uh, vice versa. I didn't think that was considered white slang, but okay. Pound cake sometimes will throw phrases out that the rest of us will kind of scratch our head and then he'll have to give us a little little class on uh, what's going on here. Uh, This is, uh, I think, a couple of years old, but WTOL in Toledo made a video uh, to support public school kids on their standardized testing. It's super cringy, but I love it. If you're watching the live stream, I'll show it to you. If you're just listening, um, the cringe is 1,000%. But they're trying to encourage the kids of Toledo, the glass city as I understand it, to do better. So the thing is full of slang, uh, I guess. I, I, I'll just show it to you, okay? Okay. 
WTOL. This isn't something that aired live on Toledo's News Leader. It's something that they did specifically for the kids at Toledo Public Schools to help them out from the coolest people these kids knew. Who's that? Local television anchors. Good morning, TPS students. It is testing week, and it's time to slay all day. Yeet. Stay woke, yeet. beyond sleek, and get that. Goop. Isn't yeet a verb? Uh, my yeet. my daughter's uh, seven, and she's like, I I know she uses it as a verb. I yeeted my shoe across the yeah, floor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what yeet is. I've heard it. I yeet is like to throw something. You throw something. Yeah. I yeeted that thing across the room. Really. Okay. Stay woke, beyond fleek, and get that Gucci breakfast. Gold. Say bye, Felicia, to that testing stress. Weather's going to be turned, right, Chris? Yes. Oh. Toledo weather going to be <laughs> relit during testing week. A hundo P chance yeah. of success. You got this, kids. Steve, how about that traffic? Are we looking at Oak? Better than Oak. <laughs> We're talking turn FOMO won't be in. By the way, the one black guy in this is like desperately embarrassed, but he's the traffic reporter, and so they throw it to him, and he he's gamely plays along. In turn FOMO won't be an issue. No traffic problems around any TPS schools to keep you from taking those tests. So get a good night's sleep. Do your best. In fact, be extra extra. We here at WTOL are v proud of you. Good, good luck, luck on, on your, your test, test, TPS, TPS students. students. V proud of you? Very proud? Yeah. V proud. It's the nice, you know. Isn't that sweet of them, though? Yeah, I mean, it's so, hand. so nice. And That's maybe, so cringy. Maybe it'll come full circle. By the way, How that- news people don't go fired for this? Like, when people do something, <laughs> right? Like they have like a, they slip up and say something wrong or whatever. This is way worse, in my opinion. Yeah. Don't do this. They, all those uh, I'm sure, I'm casters sure should be yeeted. Somebody <laughs> yeeted out of the business. <laughs> Well, that female is still there. She's been there like 15 years. She's pretty foxy. Heather somebody. She's from here, but she's been on the air in Toledo for a while. And uh, she's pretty cute. But you know somebody in uh, somebody from Toledo, Toledo Public Schools probably hits the news director up and goes, hey, we'd love it if you guys could send a message to the kids. And then they just had somebody in the news department just Google slang and just worked it into the television. A lot of slang that's not even popular slang anymore, too. Neat. Well, this is a couple years old, okay. but I but it is I, like I said, it's not brand new, but I love it. Yeet, yeah, just as an exclamation, he throws out yeet. Get that Gucci breakfast. Where was O'Kerr before uh, Cardi B used to say it? I thought it was her thing. Was that her thing? Did she I invent thought. that? Oh no, I'm sorry. It was a news anchor in Boston. Rapper Cardi B is hoping to trademark the very specific way she says "okay," and we're not kidding. Do it. I can't. Try it. Okay. <laughs> I can't roll with my tongue. Okay. No. <laughs> it's like a barricade. No. <laughs> Listen to Mark. Listen to Mark do it. Good. I can't See, do it. I can't roll my tongue. I had it in the newsroom earlier, didn't I? No, you didn't. You drove I, everybody out of the newsroom, in fact, yeah. you were practicing. I had it earlier. Mm, that's pretty good. Nailed it. I don't know about O'Kerr. I don't know. I, I, most people got hip to that because of Cardi B. If they were paying attention at all, which I hope they were. Because, listen, if you can't learn a thing or two from somebody like Cardi B, who has uh, done, you know, even before becoming a, a pop star, done a lot of things in her life. She learned from the streets. And these are the people who should be talking to your kids. You know, another thing I saw was people were just clutching their pearls over Mia Khalifa. Remember Mia Khalifa? She was this girl who did porn for about three weeks, but she's all over the Internet still. She got perfect boob job, got a nose job, the whole bit. She's very eager. She was just a young girl who uh, was like, well, I'll do porn for a little bit and make some money, and she sure did. But she got out of the biz. That's why if you Google Mia Khalifa, there's about a dozen videos of her because she left. She wasn't in porn that long. Like a few weeks, right? Something like that. But she was very popular at the time, still one of the top searches in porn. But she's since trans transitioned. It's a, kind of the natural career move for ex-porn stars to get into sports broadcasting of some kind. Lisa Ann did it. Mia Khalifa's done it. Or, they, you know, because I assume a lot of that comes from, like, they've been banging athletes or something. And then one day they just go, hey, you should come over here and get behind a microphone. But anyway, Mia Khalifa uh, was asked to be a guest lecturer at Oxford University. 
which is a very prestigious university, arguably the most prestigious university there in the UK, and people were just beside themselves. Because, you know, she walks in, giant cans, kind of, you know, wearing a business suit or something, mm-hmm. but she's like, hey, I, I, I'm so humbled to have been asked, and she's just kind of speaking to kids in the Oxford Student Union, and people are like, this is, oh, this is how you know we're, it's the end of the world, and blah, 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 and I'm like, who better to talk to students than Mia Khalifa, quite frankly? What's the problem with that? All anybody's trying to do is kind of be on the same wavelength as younger people. So why not? I mean, she's 30 now, but why not her? You're going to get some crusty old git from Oxford to go talk to some kids about their future, their possible, what, Roger Crisp from the philosophy department's going to come in? And tell the sophomore class what's what? God bless Mia Khalifa. I'd like to see her get back into pornography, quite frankly. Why hide those lights under a bushel basket? Hmm. This is a great outfit she's wearing, too. It's yes. Like, <laughs> it's like appropriate, but also still not. Because there's some unbuttoned buttons on the dress shirt, so you can still get like a little sneaky peek at the cleavage. Wonderful job. Well, she took a couple of more a, ca- more candid photos with a couple of buttons undone, but when she mm-hmm. was talking to the class, she was pretty buttoned pretty up. Pretty buttoned up, yeah. She kind of had a Miss Hoover vibe. Prince Charles could learn a thing or two from her. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Let's have a coronation mm-hmm. for this lovely woman. Hey, Randy. Hey, Alan. I, I really like that uh, Toledo Public Schools uh, tape you were just playing. Reminds me of two things. You notice they use the, those anchors use the abbreviation TPS Toledo Public Schools. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, I'm mean, like if you get those TPS reports. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> Lundberg. Yeah. yeah. Notice you've been yeah, having some problems you, uh, with Lundberg. the cover sheets. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and but before that, they kept saying, "Oh, this weather is turds. It's turds." Reminds me of like, uh, didn't you used to play like the Hank Hill version? Of, Turn down for what? <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, probably. Randy that sounds familiar. Yeah, turn down. For turn down what? for what? Yeah. Turn down for what? <laughs> <laughs> right. Pretty good. That is pretty good. Okay, thank you, Randy. There's uh, Randy with a it's good Randy. 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 Turn down for what? <laughs> That's pretty good. Turn down for what? Turn down for what? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Love uh, Hank Hill. Let's call him Frank Hill. That's not funny. <laughs> that song's old now, too, isn't it? Remember know, that, that video? How fun that, that video that was? It was crazy. That was a great video. They were like song. flying through like, uh, walls cr- and apartment buildings. Yeah, and like stuff. crashing through the floors and yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's a fun song. Yeah. It's been like uh, 10 years now. Yeah. Snake and Lil John. Turned down. Now, never did get the answer to the question. I believe it's rhetorical. Oh, it is? Mm -hmm. That's a rhetorical question. Turned down for what? Turned down for what? I mean, there's no punctuation, no question mark at the end of that. So you might be right. Pound cake, your thoughts? Yes. Yes. He's so agreeable today. That's what I like. Turn down for what? Turn down for what? There, there was the Michelle Obama turnip for what when she was trying to make kids eat healthy in school. Do you remember that? I don't remember turnip for what. No, I she remember was, people in the video like vibrating and getting all bananas and crazy. The guy goes through like the apartment floor and his girlfriend's throwing things at him, trying to slow him down, but they're just shattering on his crotch. And then she grabs a baseball bat and that shatters on him. So the guy is indestructible because of Lil John. Because he's turning up. Yes. Probably has some crunk juice. And then he, uh, his girlfriend's clothes fly off because, well, she's wearing like her bra and underwear because uh, everything is getting so turnt. Yeah. 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 Look up turnip for what if you want your kids to eat healthy. Turnip for what? Turnip for what? This was a Michelle Obama joint. Michelle Obama Hmm. uh, little video. Not especially inspired out of all the vegetables you could pick. I don't know if a turnip. Turnip. Turn up for what? 
All right. I mean, it's literally, a, that's it. Yeah, mm-hmm. turn up for what? Turn up for what? Yeah. Listen, we're always trying to, uh, people in, uh, in pop culture are always trying to find a way to be down with the kids. To get met. It's, it's a near impossible task. But uh, people keep trying to do it. People say, what is the best way to eat turnips? And my answer is always, not eat them. I've got to take, unless it's barbecue beet sauce, then that might be something to uh, look for.